ahead and get started with the recording. Um, just a little quick introduction. I'm Stephanie Hager Lyons with the Salty Lick. Um, we've got some guests on with Kelly down there at the bottom, as you guys see, um, with our first episode of Ask the Expert. Now, the name of the program is, is completely open right now. We just threw that in there. So if you guys have some suggestions, we're completely open to them. At the Salty Lick, we've been fortunate enough to have all these great friends that we've been introduced to who are in a very similar business or uh, hobby. Um, so we're going to bring these folks on because as we um, are learning over the last couple of weeks how we have to kind of get creative and how we're making money and how we're spending our time is using these ideas and learning from each other and, and kind of building from each other and building each other up. So that's kind of what we want to do over the next hour. So this week, our guests are Sherry Martin with uh, Front Room on 7th in Hamilton, Ohio. And then we have Angela Witzel with us from Dogwood Exchange. And Angela, you're in Tennessee, but I'm drawing a blank with the town. I'm in Crossville, which is between Knoxville and Nashville. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so what we're going to start out with today, guys, is I'm going to ask each of these ladies to kind of give us a quick introduction about their current business, where it's at, and some of the things that they've been doing um, since the, the C word. We're just going to leave it at that. So Sherry, if you want to start us out with just a quick introduction. Um, I'm a co-owner of Front Room on 7th. And um, we just had a, um, a virtual shopping day today, our Chamber of Commerce, uh, it's called the, the Greater Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. Um, they um, just took the, the bull by the horns and um, sent out a, um, an email to all of the members of the chamber. And um, they put time slots out, everybody grabbed a time slot and we had um, 30, 35 minutes to do, we signed in on the event and did a live. And um, that's, that's all that we've done in the last three weeks besides online sales. Okay, so that's, that's actually pretty unique. I haven't heard of any of the other chambers doing that. So that's probably a pretty good idea. We've kind of been uh, in the salty lick. Of course, we're out in the middle of nowhere. So we really have only word of mouth and things like that. So we've tried to get out and get creative with some other things like the craft kits and things like that. Um, but I hadn't actually thought about um, inviting other vendors in to try to do, you know, to connect with each other's resources. So that's a pretty good idea. And you actually just won this month's, um, what is it, Morning Dew Creations? Um, yes, the, the competitions Ours. that are central. And then it's, um, it's Morning Dew Creations. Jane, Jane Vellante is the person who right. um, does that competition. Awesome. This month was um, Vintage Owls in Wonderland. All right, so Angela, let's hear a little bit about what you're doing. Um, I have a brick and mortar, and I also have a booth in Chattanooga, which is about an hour and 15 minutes away from me. Um, unfortunately, I've had to close my store about two weeks ago. Um, it gave me an opportunity. I've been doing some kits, um, a curbside pickup for kits. And um, it's given me an opportunity to catch up on some customs that I was behind on. But um, for the last week, um, I've kind of put Dogwood Exchange on the back burner for a little bit. I've been working on a, a mask uh, cover project, organize local volunteers to create uh, mask covers for healthcare workers. And uh, we've delivered, we've cut the fabric, made the mask, and I delivered um, yesterday, we were up to 636 that we've delivered in the last wow. week. Wow. So um, I've been cutting fabric all day today. Um, so I've been doing at the store, I have a, a large parking lot, we've been doing uh, drive throughs So people making donations of, of fabric or either picking up cut material or dropping off finished masks. They just been doing drive throughs um, So I've done that two days a week for the, for this week. Um, and then today was cutting um, and I did that last week as well. So I kind of have put business stuff on hold a little bit, been doing drop ships, painting on my web, you know, website stuff. Um, but uh, I need to, to get back to doing that kind of stuff. So I'll, 
I'll be doing more kits. I've been doing lives almost every day um, mm -hmm. since I've been working on projects at the house. Um, so that's created, um, you know, some good feedback on Facebook and stuff. But um, so one thing I wanted to talk about it and um, in knowing Angela is she does this great live program. We'll call it a program MacGyver Monday. Um, and we realized the other day that, you know, a normal amount of people's joining that, but it seems like the, the vast census of, you know, our followers and all the other followers that we kind of have um, in this industry are kind of missing out on that. Um, so I, I'll ask you a couple questions about that in a minute, but if you guys are watching, if you head over to the Facebook page of Dogwood Exchange, um, and of course click like and follow that so you can get those because um, the projects that Angela's doing on Mondays um, as she has time are pretty um, common things that all of us are trying to do around the house, um, but she tackles anything. Um, I'll give you just a second if you have a little bit to splurge on that. Oh, me? You want me to talk about it? Oh, you? Sorry. I sorry. You were... I, I, know. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was <laughs> one of those, go to the Facebook page and talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, yeah, so MacGyver Monday is just a live Facebook that I do on Mondays, and um, I usually do quirky projects. Um, this past Monday, I, um, I did a kid-friendly project, and, and this will be something that I'll have a kit for. Um, I bought a half a semi-truck full of curtain <laughs> finials and rods and the curtain tiebacks and the hook thing. Of course you did. <laughs> of course I did. Um, so... I've already, uh, you know, I sold some of the curtain finials um, in an Easter kit project. Um, five of the finials with um, six Wiseau, um color samples. That kit is on my Facebook or on my website for uh, an Easter project. But the one I did Monday was I took a board, I painted it in um, one hour enamel, and then the the little tie backs, the little that you put the hook on for your curtains, um, I put them on the board and then the little, uh, the rings, almost like the wooden grommets, the rings to make a toss game for kids. So I put that together on Monday. I, I've done things like dip boots in concrete. Um, I just started I a part thing of that one. this past month uh, where I'm doing a MacGyver monthly. So March was the first month I did it, where I did a tutorial uh, of how to transform a headboard footboard into a bench. And I show you um, how to do it, uh, whether you have, you know, all the tools you need or not. I give you alternate ways that you can assemble it if you don't have the tools that I have. Um, so that was the first project on MacGyver Monthly, and that's on my website. That's a, a paid tutorial, but it was $25, and I showed you from start to finish. Um, how to how to turn a bed into a bench, but um, the MacGyver Mondays are just Facebook lives, and sometimes my projects work out, sometimes they don't. But I have fun doing them, and um, sometimes you have a hazmat suit. Sometimes I do. Right. If I'm working with glitter, which is very few times. <laughs> <laughs> I think we even saw your mother. You're putting her out to work, sanding everything. She likes to sand. She's the sanding machine. Send her my way. Yeah. <laughs> so Cal did a really simple one the other day with Garen, if you guys caught that after we watched the salt wash live, um, doing the sea glass. Um, and after we watched it, it was so simple. And it's something that any of our viewers could pick up just a couple of products. And while we're um, at the Salty Lick, we use mostly Wise Out paint, but you could use it with acrylic or enamel or anything you've got laying around. Um, so if you go back and catch that, just a few simple products in a spray bottle to get that really cool sea glass effect. Um, and it's probably a good one for kids too, because you, you can kind of line everybody up and layer a couple. And... I think Kelly uh, keeps on me. I see the side of her face. I, I think it's oh, important sorry. for the people watching. Um, I mean, I know all of y'all personally, um, but 
if you see something on a video that you're like, wow, that's an awesome project. I think a lot of people are intimidated to try it, especially uh, with my stuff, because I am working with table saws or drills or, or whatever, but, or you're like, I'm not that kind of painter. Like I tried a, a Facebook hack painting the other day and I don't paint like scenery type stuff, but you know, um, especially now when we're all home, try new things and uh, you never know when you're going to find something that you absolutely love. And, you know, like I had been pestering Sherry for months and months to do the Art Central and here she is three time winner. So um, right. it was a green dare. It was a dare on green. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm blaming you for three yeah. weeks worth of painting little black and white squares. <laughs> Yeah. So one thing we we'll want to do when we go back in and post this conversation for the rest of the folks to listen is I want to put some of those pictures of those projects on um, because the stuff Sherry's been producing over the last couple of months um, and and just from the first time when we met Sherry uh, a year or so ago maybe I didn't realize that level of painting but the the and I, I think I called it fantasy the other day more more fantasy and embellishments and things like that. It's the kind of stuff that you've been producing that we see, you know, out there in the, in the people are selling a million dollars worth of paint a year is, is the quality of stuff. So those of you that aren't um, staying in track with the front room on seventh and Sherry's work, you're, you're kind of missing out on a whole mm -hmm. other Avenue using the, um, a lot of it is the iron orchid designs products, right? It's, it's stacking and it's blending as a base and then embellishing with the Iron Orchid designs and Royce's um, tissue paper, Royce cycle tissue paper. Um, that's, that's pretty much the, the two things that I will, um, you know, kind of, kind of lean toward um, the Iron Orchid design because we're authorized stockists as are you and Kelly and um, the tissue papers from I, um, I've used um, I've used Royce uh, Royce cycle tissue paper on the last two. Yeah, we'll probably have a hard time with people that we know using using their first names and things like that. And I will try to include for the folks of you out there listening some links to the products that we talk about and and the vendors and the the product that Sherry's talking about is. Um, one of our other retailer friends, but she, um, the business is called Recycled Treasures, and she has her own line of decoupage papers. Um, so that's kind of our go-to for that line of product. We've kind of um, gotten into a, a group of different business folks who um, paint and they refurbish furniture and they do different things like that, but it seems like everybody has that little niche of something they do or something they're offering outside of that core um, and that's kind of why we're bringing everybody together um, is to try to get a, a little bit of sharing on that but for you guys to get a little piece of um, how we all work together and how we learn from each other um, and that's kind of why with our first guest with Angela with the MacGyver Monday she is doing things that none of the rest of us are doing and Sherry with the 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 highly mixed media ornate pieces and things like that so we kind of learn a whole lot um, one of the things that at the salty lick that that we've kind of honed in on over the last couple of months is the laser stuff and that's really worked out well for us um, you know before we weren't we were painting things and, and we were doing kind of normal stuff like that, but we've really been able to push out some paint kits and some things and to be able to do some custom stuff for folks to be able to keep themselves busy at home. So that's really helped us stay relevant over over the last couple of weeks. Um, and so the, the thing that you mentioned, Sherry, it's almost something I would maybe like to try to do locally with some things with the, the online business features maybe. Um, we've had some local businesses talk about um, having difficulty figuring out how to be creative and, and um, you know, in the environment that we're in today, um, trying to think of ways that they can still operate their business without actually being open and running right. into roadblocks and things like that. Um, so it'd be kind of a, a interesting thought. Maybe that's something we could all look at and maybe showcasing when we do these conversations, showcasing uh, one of our local businesses maybe and bring them in and see what kind of products that we're looking at. 
two, two things that are being done in my area, not necessarily in our genre, but um, one is um, it's on Facebook and it's, um, it's crossable curbside. So someone started the Facebook page and it's highlighting restaurants. And uh, obviously now they're all curbside pickup or takeout only, no dining. But um, it's highlighting just restaurants and what they um, have on their menu and what their special of the day is kind of thing. And it's, you know, everybody help our small businesses. And I think it's fabulous, but it kind of leaves us out um, and, you know, it makes you wonder if at the end of this, all you're going to have is big box stores and restaurants because everybody else is going to go out of business. Um, so I think we need to try to um, do that kind of thing for small businesses here and what Sherry was talking about. But um, the um, place in Chattanooga, the refinery where I have a booth, they're currently closed, but she's been doing, I think, a fabulous job about taking pictures. Um, it's 18,000 square feet, but she's been taking pictures of different things and say, and posting it, hey, if you're interested in this, uh, call, you can pay PayPal or whatever and do curbside pickup. Right. So I think that's a great way to show, you may not be able to come in the store, but this is what I have available. And, you know, maybe you could get combine those two ideas where you have that curbside pickup kind of thing uh, with the restaurants where all the small businesses in town could get together. Well, I know that we have been doing, at Salty Lake, we've been doing um, no contact drop-offs and we've been trying to wrap our head around ways that we can still teach um, similar to this and still have classes like remote classes. So that's something we're trying to wrap our heads around like um, with the Wise Owl One Hour Enamel, how we pull that in and how we, how we can teach still and have those classes, but do it in a different format. So that's something that we're trying to, to kind of come up with and maybe, you know, um, people can help us out with that. I know we have people- Put them on the spot, told them you guys can ask them anything. Yeah. Um, so and, and Stephanie, can I tell a funny story before they ask? The oh, yes. Okay, funny story. <laughs> Is it going to be something about he said? That's what no. he said? Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Possibly it was said maybe a couple times, but no. Um, the first time I ever saw mm -hmm. Angela, it's been about three years ago, and this was pre, I guess you would call it P W O P, that's pre Wise Out Paint. And <laughs> I am I am famous. I'm just famous for just doing the scroll. And I, I come across, I, it was providential. It was just a sovereign, you know, I'm, I like, there's a woman in her garage and she's just cut the heck out of the middle of a dresser and she's sitting in the hole talking big story. And I was like, this woman is magic. <laughs> it, was, it was Angela. And so I started following her. I don't even think you called it MacGyver Mondays at the time. No. But we were doing no. something. And you were, you were cutting a big chunk out of the middle of a dresser and making it into a bench with storage on the side and started following you then. And then you advertised for Jazzing Up the Junk. And Lisa and I signed up for your Jazzing Up the Junk. And then about that same time when Jasmine up the jump, you signed on to Wise Owl. And then, we're, you know, we're all family from then on. But that was the first time I ever saw Angela. I'd never, I'd never <laughs> seen before. And I was just thumbing through, just thumbing through. And, you know, there's a woman sitting in the middle of a dresser. <laughs> so let's put Angela on the spot. Okay. <laughs> so let's tell the world. Angela, what did you do before you started redoing furniture? Um, well, immediately before I got in the house, <laughs> for, for <my> <laughs> um, work your way back <laughs> before that, <laughs> but before that, um, I retired from the secret service in, um, July of 2015. So I blew my knee out. I had, um, a training accident. And, um, so I was forced to medically retire from the secret service. I was, uh, I was an agent. I was in, um, Washington, D.C. was my last assignment. So when um, I retired in July of 2015, my husband's originally from Knoxville. So we moved here and I moved my father, who was in poor health um, at the time. And um, 
So the first year I worked on gutting a house and making a garage into an apartment for him. And then after that, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? So um, <laughs> I've always like, um, why not tear shit know? apart? Exactly. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do. Um, Anger management. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> in, in my last position um, with the secret service, I was in special operations. And so I did things like, cut armored limos up and things like that so I've always been used to using power tools and um, so I wanted to start kind of um, you know saving old things my grandfather was a, a tinker he had an old fiat I remember growing up there was something wrong with the, the some valve thing in it and he had a, um, a bicycle pump when he turned it off, he had to pull the pump from the bicycle to, for it to kill the engine. So he always had crazy ideas. So I guess that's in my, my DNA. But um, I told my husband that I wanted to, to do this kind of thing. And he said, well, why don't you get a booth somewhere? So I bought a 4,000 square foot building. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So here we are almost four years later, I've been in business and... Um, it's funny because I still think he sees me with a gun and a badge on and um, because I'll tell him I'm going to knock a hole in that wall and he's like, you're going to do what? He's like, do you know what the hell you're doing? So, um, yeah. <laughs> Never you say no. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you will by the yeah. time you get done with the project. <laughs> <laughs> so Sherry, what puts you in this lovely environment? Um, I was, um, I had my master's degree in helicopter mom. Um, I, uh -huh. <laughs> I was a stay at home, I was a stay at home mom and laid it all on the table and left it there. I was a governor of my home. Well, uh, your term's the governor. I know I, that. I was, the, I was the governor. I'm telling you, I was, I was the bad cop, bad cop always. Um, but you know, I raised three of my best friends and you know, my kids are my favorite people to be around and they keep producing grandkids. So, you know, and all the things I did wrong, I did a few things right. Um, my thing was always um, taking things from nature and taking things that cost very little and spinning them into something. And I had more fun like designing my daughter's weddings um, with that type of um, repurposing. You know, it wasn't turning um, a kitchen sink into, you know, a, a dining room table, but it was, um, taking, th drawing we'll get things you there. Baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps. No, I've said, I'll just keep bringing you coffee. <laughs> I'll, and I'll, I'll blend the paint and, and paint little brown, black and white checks on it. <laughs> but you don't. <laughs> but so, it's, I've been, I've been, um, I mean, I, I started painting furniture just <laughs> for a hobby about 10 years ago and, you know, took numerous, um, chalk paint classes, you know, like everyone else did. And, um, it's probably been about nine or 10 years and, wow. um, turning that into, it was almost foreign to me, you know, to charge for it, uh, because I, you know, I was, I was able to do it for free and do it for fun and do it for friends. And, um, I finally recently had like a major come to Jesus aha moment um, when it dawned on me, and I mean, I, I love my, I love the lady who prepares my taxes, you know, same lady every year. But if I can sit down for 45 to 50 minutes and hand a woman a $500 check, I feel less awful working my tail off for three weeks on a piece and then, you know, putting a price on it because our time is valuable. And, you know, yeah. that's not being haughty at all. That is, um, that is just having an aha moment that our, our time is, our time is worth something. And I had to realize that an artist takes a piece of watercolor paper that came from a pad that caught the pad may have cost $7 and they, you know, bring magic to that and bring their gifting to that and, you know, sell a piece for depending on the size, you know, up into the thousands of dollars. So, you know, it has been, I've really been honing my art skills and um, I, I, right before Angela, made the dare of the green contest i really had started saying in about september and october of last year that i was because it's hard you know being being single it's hard to 
maneuver furniture around, you know, one person. And it is, um, I'm not Angela. I can't like, I've delivered the mother of all pieces of furniture to Atlanta, Georgia with her. And I'm like, no, really, no, really. I don't have muscles. <laughs> I'm like, come on, you got this. <laughs> Grab Bertha and walk. <laughs> but anyway, and I started saying it about September or October, and I still have plans to do this because I'm really enjoying it. I've, I've been pushing more into canvas, and it's not something that I have brought canvases out to the, the, the big world to see, but um, I've started a series. Um, whatever I do in this contest, then I'm taking that into canvas and just playing with those same techniques. And mm -hmm. my favorite so far is the... Um, Aslan's on the move. And um, I don't know what I'll go. I mean, it was just the blending in that same lion um, mold. But I said that in September or October that I'm, I'm taking my art from furniture to canvas. And then I started getting all this favor on, on these contests. So, you know, what a, what a teaser, you know, so it's, it's much too fun to, you know, just say no to, but, um, but that's, that's where I'm headed. And it is, uh, I really, like, I take a lot of online courses. Um, I, I took a, I took a, um, a six week class last year with an artist friend of mine that lives in um, North Carolina. And I just registered today for the gathering of artisans, which is the end of August this year. And it's the mm -hmm. kind of thing that um, the, you get the email with the link. If you pre-register, it's a Matt Tommy thing. Um, and it is, within 45 minutes, 250 positions have filled. And, you know, so Angela, if you can like do that, do that, what it takes to fill 12 or what it takes to fill 24 spots, where you're headed with something like Jazzin' Up the Junk has so much potential because, you know, I got to, I got to have a front row seat with the students last year and they had quality, quality takeaways. You know, they don't walk away with paper, paper chains, you know, they, they, they can walk away with technique and they walk away with excellent product. So, but anyway, so yeah, in 45 minutes, 250 spots. And I got all three, I got all three classes that I want. It's a three day, um, three day, nine to five class. So that'll be in August. Okay. So I want to go back to something you just said a few minutes ago. Um, Cause I think it's a, a good piece of conversation for us. And it's all something that we have trouble with. You talked about being able to charge for your work and what it's really worth. And I think that's something all of us in this industry, I'm bad for it. I want to give stuff away. Um, I question the value of it. I question our experience. I question things like that. I know the, the way that we charge, and I know Kelly will work on a piece for 30, 40 hours, and we'll charge $100. Um, and it's it really comes down to you feeling confident about the work that you've done and putting a price on it and that's your price. And I think we all kind of are tormented by that, right? We all struggle to be able to price our own work appropriately. We're, we're always in our audience. We're always in this group and we're always shooting questions back and forth, very like-minded, very mm -hmm. same, same plane. Um, same plain artists. And um, I think it's an aha moment for me when I go into my artist group, uh, my friends that are abstract artists and realists and, um, and you, you're a furniture artist. Oh, let me show you some pictures. And they've taken a can of spray paint. These are artists. I mean, these are, these are, um, these are people who, you know, can get 600 to, you know, a thousand dollars from a, from a, um, a piece of work they've done and they'll show me a piece of furniture that has ha they've gone to like one of the big box stores and gotten Rylon or one of the spray paints and I don't have the heart to say you know you know you can tell <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can tell yeah I saw a story a while back and it, it, it's, it goes along with this and I think it explains it perfectly. Um, the story was this woman uh, goes into a jewelry store, so, uh, you know, a bead, a bead type store that makes bracelets. And she went in and she's like, I can't believe your bracelet is that much. 
and she's mm -hmm. like, you know, the clasps cost this much, the beads cost this much, the string cost this much, you know, it shouldn't cost that much. So she got the price, she got the price down. She's like, you know, it's, it's a clasp, it's string, it's beads. And um, so the, the artist said, well, you'll get your package in two weeks. So the lady went back home and was bragging about how um, she had gotten this great deal at this art studio and um, how she was able to get her down on her price. And then two weeks later, she got her package from the artist and it was a ball of string, a clasp, yeah. and a, a packet of beads. So she called the lady and she said, what, what's this, you know, where's my bracelet? And she said, you got what you paid for. If you feel like something is missing, then you need to pay more. And that comes with the, you know, the labor, the how-to of how to put it together, the expertise of knowing what to do and what not to do, the skill of doing it, the time it takes to put it together. Those are things that you have to pay for. And if you want to pay less, then you need to go do it yourself. And you're still not going to get the same quality of product because that would have been the first time that you've done it. And right. the person that you're buying for, the piece right beside Sherry, she's never made that piece before, but she's done all of those processes multiple times. She's learned what to do over and over, what works best for- I've done them wrong. I've done them wrong a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> to do it right. <laughs> and, and, yeah, if you've seen me on MacGyver Monday, I do a lot wrong, but it teaches me how to do it right. Um, and somebody that pays for the individual elements at a cheaper price, you need to pay for that sometimes. You need to pay for the whole thing that the artist has to offer because, you know, you can't put a price on that, on that experience and, you know. Right. No, I completely I'm, agree. I'm, I'm always um, taken back by the, um, the guts that we'll just say John Smith because I don't know a John Smith. Um, thumb through Facebook Marketplace and look at the prices that someone is asking for that is not paying overhead. Um, they have probably gone to a big box store and got some latex paint and, you know, got all precious and slapped it on a piece and they're asking hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I don't know if they get it. You know, we, you know, asking price and, you know, the price you get are two different mm -hmm. things, but, um, I, we need to have that reckless abandon. <laughs> if John Smith, <laughs> if John Smith can use, you know, latex paint and, you know, and make a mess for the next person that wants the project that, you know, they're going to be, it's going to be carry. Um, it's going to be Carrie Buck with her, with her stripping, <laughs> stripping chewing gum off of that piece. I think your area also, um, unfortunately, demands what you can and can't charge because, you know, I'm in, I'm in a very small town and if I were in Knoxville or Nashville, you know, I could get probably a lot more for my pieces. Um, and I do <laughs> ship. Um, I've shipped a piano that I turned into a desk from of Tennessee course. to New York, um, <laughs> you know, I ship, I'm willing to ship it to you, but um, a lot of people, um, you know, I'm in a small town, so the economic situation here is not what it is in, in bigger towns, so I think that also, um, you know, drives your, unfortunately drives your price. Yeah, we're in the same situation. But I've been I think to your store. <laughs> I think we're we're limiting, um, and by by saying that we're in a small town, it doesn't mean that your your work is less valuable. Right. But sometimes you do have to substitute what pieces you produce more of, or what types, just based on what sell to try to keep the lights on, um, and kind of do or, the things that you like to, to do. Or in the have, because there are two different ways you can turn out a piece that's going to be beautiful that you have six or eight hours in and you know do lots of those if that's you know if you can keep that you know in the budget you want and then do the specialty pieces where you know you leave your heart and soul in it so right. you know, it's, it's kind of two different things but um 
you at the location is everything. Um, and, and Hamilton, we're very blessed. Hamilton has a, um, an artist renaissance going on. It's, it's crazy creative and the foodies and the, it's an exciting place to be. And we live through the whole roller coaster. Somebody lost their mind and gave Hamilton an exclamation point about 30 years ago or 25 years ago. It did not deserve one. <laughs> and at some point, it, someone took it back away from us. <laughs> and then, um, you know, now it is exciting. It's, um, we've got a new thing coming. It's called Spooky Nook. And, you know, we'll talk about that another day. What's getting ready to ha happen in Hamilton is Hamilton is going to explode at the seams. And that's exciting. Yeah, that's good for, for especially when you're, you guys aren't a small town like we are, but smaller areas when you start mm -hmm. actually building and when it goes the artsy way instead of the industrial way, Absolutely. then you kind of feel like you really hit the jackpot. So I did post in the chat, guys, um, for the folks of you that have joined us, feel free to unmute if you have questions or um, any pieces of conversation that you're hoping we hit, anything like that, um, feel free to interject. We're just kind of... Um, talking through the industry and, and kind of um, filling everybody out to see what's working, what isn't. I think, um, Stephanie, along the lines of what we were just talking about, I think uh, we all as business owners of a creative business, you also have to make the hard decision. Do I paint what the masses want? Like, um, I hardly ever paint anything white. The farmhouse is very popular. Um, <laughs> I, I like color. I don't paint a lot of white. Um, I will do a custom job occasionally, but I, I just don't like painting stuff white. Not because I don't think it looks pretty. There are a lot of pieces that I see that I think are beautiful. That's just not my thing. Um, so I think you have to try to find that balance in, am I going to go with what the masses want or am I going to follow my artistic, um, you know, what I want to do artistically. Like mm -hmm. I do almost every month the Art Central Challenge and I've won twice. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, I do it because it does help me grow as an artist. Absolutely. Um, I, just did, I just did the Alice in Wonderland um, mm -hmm. challenge and I was never much of an Alice in Wonderland um, person. And I was very proud of my piece this month um, you know, obviously I didn't win. Apparently Sherry has to not compete in order for me to win again. But <laughs> Your piece was awesome though. Your piece was. Thank you. But I was very proud of it. And the piece that I won, um, I put metal. I got copper that came from a skylight um, flashing and had it soldered together and wrapped it around the top of the piece. So, um, that's when I have fun when I think outside of the box and I do things like that, or I try something new on a piece. So I think all business owners have to figure out where that happy medium is, where, where you're going with the masses. Are you painting everything white or are you doing those off the wall pieces that may sit in your store for a while, but you learned something and you grew from, from creating it. Right. All right, guys, so we've got about 15 minutes left in the session. One of the last questions I have for you, too, is what's next? What's, what's your next steps of, of getting through the pandemic, but also um, keeping your business up and keeping your creativity up in, in, in the midst of what everybody's going through? Who do you want to go first? You. You're, you're it. Okay. Um, I do a lot of smalls, um, not, not smalls like candlesticks. Um, I help, um, I'm an admin for a group that's called Art Swaps for Nice People. And you can't talk about like politics in this group and you have to be nice. <laughs> you don't have to be like perfect. You just have to be nice to one another. Mm -hmm. And we do different swaps. Um, I'm in the swap that's due in about two weeks. So I'll probably be working on it and finish it. And the, the theme was fantasy. So I'll have to do some kind of um, gnomes or uh, unicorns or fairies. And it's a two and a half by three and a half inch card. And so what you think is you're doing a piece of art, but you're shrinking it down to the size of a playing card or a, a baseball card. Mm -hmm. And um, things like that, um, you would think the smaller it is, it'd be easier. It's harder for me. You know, I can work on something that's this big because the strokes are this big 
but you know, shrinking it down like this and the details are matter. Um, I, do, I do a lot of things like that. And um, the creative flow is something that um, I came into accidentally. You know, I hadn't studied it. And then, you know, the creative flow um, in a nutshell is um, the, the, the frontal lobe of your, uh, your, this part of your brain, um, they call it the, um, the, the mean librarian and it, it's all the rules and it's all the fear. And when you get into, and everyone gets to um, create it, like a creative flow in a different way, uh, whether it's music or whether it's nature or whether it's, um, you know, watching a themed movie. I, I literally watched um, the notebook, you know, the, the, the month that I had to um, do the romance oh, piece. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, skip. <laughs> a few anyway. tears to get you in the mood. Oh, I cried. I, there was snot involved. I was crying and, and Allie, yeah, <laughs> Allie and Noah were out in the lake and there were swans. And I'm like, well, not yet. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, but creative flow is um, one of the, one of the favorite people that I've followed a lot. Um, creative flow explained the best uh, Josie Lewis and she's on Instagram. And I think it's Josie Lewis art. I would recommend anybody she does watercolor and she does a lot of um, just watch her videos. Josie Lewis and she she spoke at this last conference that I was at last month and she explained I, I was doing it and I was getting there when I was working on my green piece I got to a place where I wasn't thinking and I didn't have a process it's like I was taking dictation and I was just like following this this you know and it was it was amazing and she explains that so well and um so creative flow definitely in art and in furniture now now i didn't hit creative flow with with alice in wonderland i just worked my tail off and painted bright colors and black and white checks and watched the movie a bunch of times for inspiration but never hit that magic you would think it'd be easy on a child movie that's pure fantasy but that that's not my like watching a movie like that inspires me but it doesn't turn off that part of my brain that's thinking and deciding and, and planning and, and, uh, you know, so anyway, creative flow is, is something that I am pushing into with furniture art and with um, canvas. Cool. All right, Angela, before we jump over to you, we've got a couple of questions in the group. Um, so Miss Bronk, I'm going to unmute you and let you ask your question yourself. And if you want to turn your video on, that's completely up to you. Let's see. So you should be unmuted if you Hi. want to ask the group. Thank you for joining. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. We can. Hello. Thank you guys are we can hear you. Oh. Okay. Um hi, I'm I actually just go by CJ, but so I've only done dressers. I've been doing this for about a year now. Um it just kind of started as a hobby and kind of turned into this business. Um but I, my question was have you guys ever done like a full bedroom suit? I've been looking into like maybe um, buying a whole bedroom suit and selling it, you know, like that, or should I just stick with the dressers or what is, is it worth it to put all that time into something like that? Cause I know how long it takes me to do a dresser. So just to start off, we, at the Salty Lick, we buy full suits sometimes and I've, I've still got to actually get through getting one done. But in the past, we have bought a lot of French provincial sets, not big sets, but like three piece sets. And people really like the idea of having matching pieces. Now, again, we're in an area where everybody wants to negotiate to the level of big lots prices or below. But I think there's a lot of opportunity um, if you can spend the time and you can get all the pieces uniform to where not necessarily that they look factory, but that you accent with each of them, that you can be more profitable because, and especially where we're at with auctions, you can get a better price on buying the full set than you can an individual piece. So even if at the end of the day, you have to break up that set and sell it individually, you still may be better off by buying the entire set. Okay. Yeah. I know like in the past, a couple people have asked me for, um, if they, I had a, you know, full set and I've just never like thought about doing that before. I just stick to, I work, I also work full time, not right now, obviously with what's going mm -hmm. on, but so, but eventually I'd like to, um, 
quit my full time job and just do this. But you know, that can well, be down the road. Welcome to crazy. Yeah, welcome to crazy. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I, I, I would have one word of caution for her, at least in my area. Um, people are looking for two nightstands and the older stuff, because <laughs> I try to recycle the old stuff that's, you know, real furniture. They only came with one nightstand. So right. um, people nowadays, they want a nightstand on both sides of the bed. So um, I would try to try to find good quality sets that have two nightstands because people are going to want that. Oh, that's right. something that has similar shapes that right. you can build right. a set from. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say is um, I am a big proponent of use what's in your hand. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I've bought a lot of estate sales and I've never bought a whole suit. I like to, um, like Kelly just said, you know, use similar shapes and the design and the color you know, kind of pull it in and it might, I'm not matchy matchy. I am whimsical and I am, um, I, I have a chair in my, in my bedroom that has a mermaid painted on it that I, you know, took a class with Tracy Bellion probably four years ago. So I like, I like to take different pieces, old pieces and configure them into a set, if that makes any sense. And I think you can right. get, I think you can do that on a lower budget by shop from your own stuff, you know, and, you know, yeah. look in your garage and see what you've got. Yeah. Um, I live in Northwest Pennsylvania, so it's like farmhouse all the time, all so, day, yeah. every day. And I am so sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to our misery. Uh, all right. Well, CJ, thank you so much for the right, question. Thank you. Question. I'm going to move on to Mandy and Mandy says we can't unmute her because of some background noise, but she asks the group, what would you recommend for painting cabinets, the paint type and, and colors? And I guess what's probably what's trending right now. Well, I, I think all of us are going to say, of course, the, the Wise Owl One Hour Enamel. Absolutely. Um, right. There's, there's nothing I like have it. teamed up with, um, we have a local custom cabinet maker, and his son has been doing their finishing work for 13 years, and he decided to go out on his own. And as soon as I heard he wasn't working with his father, I contacted him and said, I have this awesome product. And, you know, I don't want to go into people's homes and do their kitchen cabinets. Um, it's just not something that I want to do. Um, so he's been doing kitchen cabinets, but the one hour enamel, it, it's awesome on furniture. It's awesome on front doors, um, cabinets, bathroom cabinets. Um, it goes on um, easy. You do have to prime. You have to have proper prep. Um, but the, the Wise Owl one hour enamel is, is amazing. Um, I've seen here lately a lot of blue kitchens that I have fallen in love with. Yeah. Um, I posted one on my page the other day and it didn't get a lot of comments. I don't know if it was because I had an antique stove in it that was blue, but I saw one on the Today Show yesterday. They were, um, I think it was yesterday. The days were running together, but um, the cabinets were blue uh, and we have a color inkwell that's, it's one of my favorite colors and you know, I feel like I'm cheating on green, but um, Inkwell is fabulous. <laughs> so um, I think some color in the kitchen yeah, I'll, is kind of coming in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll see, I, just got, <laughs> I just got Prussian. I just ordered Prussian, so I want to do mine in Prussian. So but one thing we're seeing a lot of is, um, well, just, sorry to interrupt you, but one thing we're seeing a lot of with those two colors, like the Snow Owl and the Inkwell, Angela is we're seeing a lot of people do their uppers and lowers mm -hmm. in contrasting colors and so mm -hmm. it's maybe a few months old and we may be seeing some more because like you said we're seeing a lot of pictures of those um, grayish blues or those muted blues kind of like the French uh, the French country colors like the seeded eucalyptus like Kelly was talking about and that beautiful um, so peaceful. And of course we're, we're spouting wise out colors we're pretty solid on the wise out one hour enamel for our um, kitchen cabinets and our counters and even some floors that we've been redoing. Um, and different and it's, it's not like we walked off the street and wise owl is all we know. I've had my hands in, you know, tons of paint and wise owl is what we choose. You know, it's what mm -hmm. I choose. I'll speak for myself. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the one hour enamel is, and, and prep, you know, prep is important. I don't care who says what, 
prep, you know, don't, don't waste your time because you're going to be doing it again. Mm-hmm. Prep, prep and prep thoroughly and for, and for the long, for the long game. And practice with the one hour enamel. It's, it's a different ball game. It's, it's a, it's not like anything I've used before. And there's a reason for that because it, it cures so quickly, but take a piece and practice before you start on something as big as cabinets, get a, um, cabinet door from restore paint the inside of the cabinet door just do something to get your hands on the paint and give it a good few practice strokes before you actually go all the way into cabinets and there's a lot of good tutorials from different people out there showing how to use the product and you know wise owl is a tight-knit group any wise owl retailer would be glad to help you um it's it it is a different product than the chalk synthesis it definitely takes um a little bit of getting used to but once you get used to it um, it's it's awesome to work with all right guys I'm gonna unmute um, Chelsea has a question for us so I'm gonna unmute her and Chelsea if you want your video on that's up to you go ahead and ask your question when you're ready Chelsea turn your video on <clears throat> hi <laughs> hi Chelsea okay Hi, girl. I've been, I have been listening the whole time. So here's my question. What is everyone's favorite uh, color combinations for cabinets? Like, do you like a solid color up, up top and bottom, or do you like a different color on top and bottom? And if so, what would be your favorite? Favorite in our own home or favorite, like, dream, dream kitchen? Dream. Dream kitchen. Uh, Chelsea, I've seen your kitchen and I've seen the, the pictures that you've posted. Um, your kitchen, uh, your kitchen, yeah. is, your kitchen is, it's spectacular. This one? <laughs> With the cupboards uh, open? So for off. the other folks of you guys on, um, Chelsea is with Apple Blossom Way and she is going to be our guest um, in one of the next episodes. So we'll get to grill her a little more as well. I think my favorite right now is is a, a snow owl or, or one of the whites with seeded eucalyptus. Um, Kelly's waving her impression that she's she... getting she's getting vetoed because this is coming. I don't know how it's coming, but this is coming. Like this right here. Well, that you can you can spray the enamel, which is nice, so it, it does yeah. make it um, you know faster. So I can put Prussian on faster. Exactly. You can do it before she gets home. <laughs> you guys Always haven't seen home. how Kelly works, have you? <laughs> yeah. oh. I, would say, cat, I would say when the cat's away, but your cat's never going to go away. Never away. <laughs> True. We've been lucky. I haven't had one on my head. <laughs> All right, guys. It looks like Lisa has a question for Angela. So Lisa, I'm going to unmute you and you can join in with us. You can turn on your camera if you want. Sorry, I don't know why it's just going on me, guys. <laughs> Chelsea just did the panting hair fling. Well, I'm trying, I'm like running from room to room, trying to find somewhere to sit. <laughs> and it keeps like it when any noise you make it goes to you and so if i like smack something all of a sudden it's on my face and i'm like what sorry <laughs> i feel like i'm missing so much fun <laughs> <laughs> all right lisa let's let's hear your question thanks for joining okay well don't look at me i've been painting floors all day <laughs> well, um, we're looking <laughs> we're looking okay i've known angela a few years now and i know she's in secret service well she was Girl, um, what do you mean about cutting up armored cars? Um, what, what did that mean? Like literally if cutting the car, local fire departments do with the jaws on. Oh, you mean like if it's in an accident? Uh, I've been one of people on my team that would have gone in with certain tools and certain things that I can't talk about of how gotcha. to cut the president out of the vehicle. Um, and um, oh. so, you know, I have training in, in heavy machinery in order to gain entry into, into the armored vehicle. So, okay. you know, if we had to practice on armored vehicles and I've cut up a lot of regular vehicles 
Um, so just, I think that's where my, my uh, love of tearing things up, I've cut up cars and it's pretty fun. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, can we do that in Tennessee then? Yes, I was gonna say, Angela, if I buy you extra yeah. guacamole when we go eat dinner at the Mexican yeah. place, will mm -hmm. you tell us crazy stories again? Because it's like story time <laughs> with Angela. It's, the bomb. it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, when we were between <laughs> Angela, didn't know you yet, and James, and you guys are throwing words that I don't even know. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm looking at Lisa like, I don't in know. The, in the back of the uh, Twilight uh, Zone. <laughs> <laughs> they were okay, both that, that's very all well rehearsed. Questions. Yeah. <laughs> So real quick, we're, we're at the end of the hour, but one more thing I want to throw out since you guys just brought it up. I think we brought it up earlier and I forgot to throw it back out there is um, Angela hosts a, uh, we're going to coin it like a festival type learning fiasco, jazzing up the junk in August and a lot of us will be there. Um, so if you want some more details about that, it is down in Tennessee during the 127 yard sale, right? Mm -hmm. So um everything willing with everything we have going on now we hope to still be there in august with them um, because we're really jealous last year when we saw everybody having fun and you know sweaty and stuff you and should be it's tools. a blast um, we are yeah, so it was pretty ridiculous that we weren't there um i so just we're... wanted to be there to meet the pig <laughs> <laughs> last year there was a pig rescue that was an incident with a pig uh, yes, well, I said if this quarantine doesn't take a turn, you guys are going to find me at the at the water. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only four tickets left for um, for students, and um, the tickets can be purchased on my website, which is dogwoodexchange.com, and it has the information of um, who is the instructing this year and um, what what they're instructing. So it's not just make and takes. Um, you're learning a technique that you can use in a bigger um, platform. So you may be painting something small, but you're learning a technique that you can apply to a piece of furniture or maybe to your, um, to the walls in your home or, um, so you're, you're learning skills. So it's not just demos, you're actually doing it, you're getting your hands dirty. And um, then you get a project to take home um, for the majority of the classes. So it's, um, it's a Monday through Thursday um, during the 127 corridor sale, which is the world's longest yard sale. Um, it comes directly through my town and it's 627 yards, uh, 20, 627 miles of yard sale jumping. <laughs> huge. It's, it's, it's huge, it's awesome. My if you're looking for it, you it's, can find it. This is our um, shop. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Huge. It's huge. <laughs> All right. So we've we had Sherry with Front Room on 7th, Angela with Dogwood Exchange. Thank you guys for coming on and enduring the conversation and for you folks for jumping on with us and asking the questions. I'm going to get this video put together and put it out there. And hopefully next week we'll kind of have a, another meeting of the minds on Wednesday. We'll, we'll bring on some other folks to see if we can't harass them for an hour. <laughs> Stephanie, I want to say thank you, you and Kelly. Thank you for, thank you for, you know, troubleshoot or do, like, what can what can we do during this time you know and and that was that was brilliant that you you know take lemons and make lemonade and you know is this is fun this is what we do on a you know weekly basis if I have a question you know I, I'm you know reaching out and I, I I think this is a great I think this is a great platform I, I hope it does really well for you hopefully we can help some folks and, and learn some things as we go as well so I'm looking forward to it looking forward to next week and uh and we'll see who, like I said, who we can get on and try to get some more folks in asking questions. Uh, I figured the Zoom meeting probably threw a lot of people off, um, waiting for a live to come up. So I see some puppies coming in. <laughs> All <laughs> right, guys, thanks house. again. Everybody have a good night. <laughs>